Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to tackle the mystery of how stars and galaxies actually form the universe. Remember what the universe was like after decoupling. We went from the matter era to the radiation era, where the universe was filled with hydrogen and helium. The electrons began to couple with the, the protons and the alpha particles to form atoms. So we had molecular or atomic hydrogen and helium. And the radiation was free to roam through the universe because the universe was not transparent to the cosmic background radiation, which at the time had a wavelength of about 970 nanometers, which puts it into the infrared radiation, caused the universe to be completely devoid of light, no light whatsoever. There were no stars, no galaxies, no visible light roaming around the universe, pitch black. But we had matter all throughout the universe, fairly dense because the universe was still fairly small in relation to what it is today. And so here we have these atoms that now under gravity's force would begin to coalesce into stars. But how did that really happen? Because hundreds of years ago, Newton already tackled this problem, trying to wonder how can we reconcile how gas can turn into something solid? How much force of gravity is required to put gas molecules together? Because as gravity pushes gas molecules closer together, pressure and heat builds up, which then tends to push the molecules further apart. So what would it be in the universe that would actually cause these molecules and these atoms to come close enough together to actually form stars? What would it take? Well, it wasn't until 1902 when James Jeans came along and he tackled this problem in a more mathematical way. He actually calculated the region of influence required to cause gravity to push atoms together in a close enough pack so that stars could actually form. And so he actually tried to figure out how big of a region that is required to have enough gravity there, enough matter there, to make it coalesce into something like a star. We call that Jeans length, and here's the equation. Jeans length is equal to the square root of pi times k, which is the Boltzmann's constant, times the temperature of the gas, divided by the mass of the atoms in the gas, divided by the gravitational constant, and divided by the density of the gas. And so when we work that out, and of course Boltzmann constant is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin, the temperature at the coupling was 3,000 Kelvin. The mass for these atoms, which is primarily hydrogen, was 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The, excel the uh, gravitational constant is well known. The density at the time was estimated to be 1 times 10 to the minus 18 kilograms per cubic meter, which is much more dense than the universe is today. And Jeans length from that calculated was 108 light years. So what they figured was that in regions where the density of the universe was greater than other regions, and we already know from studying the background radiation very carefully, that there were these density fluctuations in the universe. Some regions that were slightly more dense, some regions that were slightly less dense, and because of Gene's calculation here in his equation, we're actually able to calculate that the size of the region where something could coalesce into, into where stars could form had to be about 108 light years across. Now it turns out some of the earliest structures in the universe are what we call global clusters. Clusters of stars anywhere from 100,000 to a million stars clustered together like that. And it turns out that the typical size of a global, of a global cluster is about 60 to 100 light years across. Here's a nice little picture of what a global cluster looks like. They're absolutely phenomenal inside, if you can imagine, a million stars clustered together very, very densely like that. In our galaxy, there's about 150 of these clusters, and we find these clusters in many galaxies. So there's definitely a relationship between where clusters formed, and we think those are the earliest structures of the universe, and where galaxies formed, and the relationship with Gene's, uh, Gene's law here, or Gene's length. And so what we're thinking is that in the very beginning, there was regions about 100 light years across that were under the influence of gravity was able to push matter together close enough for stars to form. And not just for a few stars to form, but for hundreds and thousands and up to a million stars to form in the same region forming these clusters. Now the typical cluster has anywhere from 100 to a million stars, I mean I should say 100,000 to a million stars, let's say an average of about 500,000, and that would be about 500,000 times the mass of our sun clustered together that, like that, and that does indeed fall into the realm of, of what we think of what happened with this kind of density and that kind of volume, we know that there was enough matter in those regions for that amount of stars to form within a, a radius or within a diameter of about 108 light years. So that kind of set the pace. It really does make sense that in the 
in the early universe, when we had these slight density fluctuations, that in regions about 100 light years across, the matter would then coalesce together, based upon what we found on their genes length, into regions where global clusters could then form. Now, of course, once you begin to form global clusters, the density is much greater. That would then be the region where galaxies could form and more and more stars could form. So this is where we think the universe started getting its structure. And in the next video, we're going to see how today's structured universe falls in line with what we're seeing here in the very early universe, how that then caused galaxies to exist along the filament regions along the universe with great vast voids in between them. So that's the topic of our next video, if you're still interested.